Hi, in this third video, we will see some basic things concerning object manipulation. We continue with the same project, unityinterface.zip. Object activation and multiple selection. If you select an object, for example one of the cans, and go to the inspector window, you can disable it by unchecking the checkbox next to its name. A disabled object cannot be seen in the scene window. You can still see it in the hierarchy window, but its name is in a softer faded color. Let me select another object to see that color better. In this hierarchy window, you still can select it and activate it again by setting the same checkbox. An object that is disabled at the start of the game does not exist from the point of view of the game. It will not produce any effect. Select a compound object like start, which is the parent of all the elements in the beginning of the level. If you uncheck its activation box in the inspector, this object and all its children are disabled. This part of the game will not exist when I press the play button. Let us activate it again. I can select more than one object at a time. If I select for example one can in the scene window by clicking on it with the left mouse button as we saw, you can add another object to the selection by clicking on the new object while holding the shift key, for example a second can. I can also add to the selection the third can that is near. I could also do the same in the hierarchy window. When several objects are selected, I can see a mix of their properties in the inspector window. You see a horizontal line in those fields that are different among the selected objects. For example, in name, since the three cans have different names. Also, their position and rotation have lines because they are different. However, not in the scale fields where you can see values because the three cans have the same scale. The same happens to all object components that are equal for the three cans. This happens so because they come from a prefab. So I can see all their values which are equal. One powerful feature of Unity is that having a multiple selection like this, you can change values of all the selected objects simultaneously. For example, their material by clicking in this dot close to the material name. I can choose the material from the ones I have in the game. Uh, finally, I select the original CAM material and close the material selection window. Alternatively, I can deactivate or activate all selected objects at a time, clicking on the active checkbox. New objects and copies. You can add a new object to the scene by dragging and dropping a prefab to either the sim window or the hierarchy window. For example, in the project window, I go to the prefabs folder and select the can prefab. Dragging and dropping it with the mouse to the scene window creates a new copy or instance of the can in the scene. You can move it or rotate it like any other object. You can delete any selected objects by hitting the delete key above the cursor keys. This can be done either in the scene window or in the hierarchy window. Dragging and dropping prefabs also works in the hierarchy window. You can make a copy of an object by selecting it and hitting Ctrl plus D, D for duplicate. This can be done also in both windows. Be careful, the copy 
is in the same place as the original with the same orientation. You have to move it to separate it from the original. Making copies of objects or deleting them can be done in the high key window by using a pop-up menu that appears when you right click on an object. I will delete all new CAN instances. Names can also be changed in the high key window. Parent-child relationships. The previous pop-up menu allows also the creation of objects. If you select, for example, the start object and right click choosing create empty, a new object named game object appears. The object has been created as a child of start. Empty objects like this one have only the header and the transform component. You may use an empty as a reference in a space or for grouping. If you want to use this empty to group the cans, first change its name to cans. Then select all cans. By dragging and dropping one or more objects on top of another one in the hierarchy window, this last object becomes the parent of all other objects. Let's do it. Dragging the selected cans to the object name cans, we get now that the empty cans is the parent of the can objects. Another important thing concerning parent-child relationships is that if you transform a parent, all its children follow the transformation. Position, rotation or scale. For example, selecting the empty named cans, I can now move all cans together. You can also move each child. It will move related to the parent. Adding a behavior script to an object. If you have tried to run this game pushing the play button, you will see that the ball falls and nothing more happens. This is because we have not added a behavior script to the ball that represents the player of the game. Stop the game by clicking again on the play button. Behaviors in Unity are scripts, code in C Sharp or Unity scripts. They are components that can be added to the object. You can add a behavior script to an object in several ways. Select the ball. In the inspector window, scroll down past all other components and click on the button Add Component. You could go to the New Script section and create a new one or Escape key. Go to Scripts and select the one we have already called. PlayerBehavior.cs for C Sharp. You may also go to the scripts folder of the project window, select player behavior script there, and drag and drop the script on the object in the hierarchy window. Since we have two times the same script, we can remove one of them in the inspector, clicking in the small core icon and selecting remove component. Components can also be deactivated by clicking on this checkbox. Running and debugging. If you launch the game now, you can control the ball with the cursor keys. You can also make it jump with the space key. The objective of the game is to get to the final goal, collecting all cans. There is a couple of checkpoints in the way to get there. In any moment, you can see, inspect the properties of the objects while the game is running. For example, with the ball selected, you can see its transformation changing as it moves. And also, you can expand the behavior script, the behavior component, to see the values of its public variables, like the number of cans collected. To direct again your keyboard input to the game, you have to click on the game window. At any time, you can pause the game by clicking the pause button 
and even go frame by frame clicking this button. You can also continue normal execution deactivating pause. Stop the game after making sure that you have collected at least one can. Console window. Another important window is the console. You can open it in the window menu option console or by clicking once on the bottom of the game window when you have some log or error message on it. Here we see in the console things written by the game while it is running. If you click in one of the messages, the IDE, Integrated Development Environment Mono Develop, opens showing the line of code that had the message or error. In our case, a call to the debug class method log. We can check it to show the message in English. After modifying the text, we make sure to go to File, Option, Save All, and return to the Unity Editor. Below, we can see an animated icon showing that it is compiling the code. If no error happens, we have our code modified. Before you exit the Unity Editor, make sure to go to File, Save Scenes, and File, Save project. Thanks.